Hi everyone, it's Laura here with l and B's Garns and Blossoms. Welcome to today's video. So this is another video that I didn't get a chance to upload. So I'm uploading it now. The first thing I did when I came to this job was do a bit of a walkthrough. Just so I could see what needed to be done and gave me a good idea of how long it would most likely take me to do the garden. However with this garden I knew it would probably take me most of the day anyway. Just because of how big it is. Um, usually this does take me most of the day to do. This garden is one of my favourite gardens to do. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, there's always something of interest. There always seems to be something flowering, so there's always a bit of colour in the garden. This was actually one of my dad's first clients when he got into the gardening business. So he started off doing garden maintenance, a bit like what I'm doing. But as time went on, he got more into landscaping rather than just tidying through. Uh, and that's where I come into it. Uh, because he couldn't keep on top of keeping all these gardens tidy, he sort of asked me if I wanted to come in, if I look after all the gardens and he can focus on all the landscaping, which is what I did. And like I say, this is one of his first clients. I think this garden has been ooh, sort of on the rounds for the past over 30 years. And since he started this, it's changed a lot. Like this bit you see here, this actually used to be a house. So where that lawn is, a house used to sit on here. And what happened was the client, when it was up for sale, she brought it and had it demolished and turned it into a garden. Now this bit you see here, um, recently she has told us that she wants this redoing. As you can see, I mean, there are quite a few weeds in there, so I did go through and weed this bit but some of the shrubs and that are a bit overgrown, maybe. It sort of, it needs tidying up basically, as you can see. So sometime in the future we will be redoing all that, which I'll, I'll probably film for you if I get a chance to help my dad and do it. Now I'm getting to the end of the walkthrough. Uh, I know that I'll start off with the strimming, which is what you see here. It is a different angle than usual, but I remember when I did film this, I was trying different views just to see what looked better. So you will see some shots of footage with me from my head camera. After I finished going around with the strimmer, I then move on to the mowing. Now I've completed all the mowing, I move on to edging the lawns. So here I'm using the long handled edging shears and as you can see it's a different camera angle. Uh, so I go around, there's not many of the lawns that actually have a, an edge like this where I need to use the edging shears and um, there's a couple of them where I can actually just use the strimmer. I do prefer to use the edging shears than the strimmer on these sorts of edges. Just because I'm so used to using the edging shears, I find that it gives it a neater finish. And if I were to move on to having a go at using the strimmer to do it, I know it would look quite messy. And that's not what I want. <laughs> I've now wedged all the lawns with the edging shears, so now I go around and work my way through all the borders that this garden has, which are, are quite a few, so 
this takes me most of the day but in this video it's only what 10-15 minutes for you <laughs> and of course I've always got my favourite little helper on hand <laughs> Places she chooses to lie. She lies on the soil that I've just dug over. She's got all that grass to lie on. She chooses to lie on the soil. Like I said at the start of the video, this part of the garden will be re-landscaped. I'm not sure when, but it'll definitely be sometime this year. So hopefully if I do get a chance to help my dad come and landscape it, then I'll film it. Uh, but if not, then I will definitely show you what it looks like after, when he's done it. So here you can see me cutting back an aubrecia. Aubrecia is great for growing over walls. It cascades down and has these lovely purple. Some of them have pink flowers. What you want to do is once they finish flowering, cut them back to the top of the wall. Then the growth for the rest of the year will be next year's flowers. See me trimming up this you want on the shrub. As you can tell, it looks a bit messy, so I'm just trimming it just to tidy it up. This you want miss has lovely white and green variegated leaves that adds a nice bit of interest during the autumn winter months when nothing else is really flowering. me cutting back some more aubrecia. Like I say, I'm not cutting it all the way back, just to the top of the wall. Here's another angle again of me reading through the garden borders. Uh, again, I'm just picking out any leaves that I see or anything I know the client won't want in the garden.
vehicle deadheading the rose. As you can see, there's a lot of gone over flowers. So I'm very carefully trying to just pick off all the gone over flowers. It's a bit difficult with these secateurs because they have a tendency to stay shut. So the little locking mechanism that you use to close them up, it has a tendency to slip and keep the secateurs shut, which is really annoying when you're trying to cut things. One thing I have learned from this client since working on this garden is instead of using pesticides to get rid of green fly and aphids and all that that like to attack the roses, if you use garlic cloves, so what you do is you pull off a garlic clove and if you bury it just underneath where the rose plant is, of course it'll grow, but before it does, I don't know what it is, if it's the aroma or whatever it is, but it keeps the aphids and green flies and things at bay. And I have seen it work because when I have planted the clover underneath the rose plants, each time I come and check on them, I've never seen a green fly or an aphid on these roses. Now I don't know if it works every time on every garden, but I do know on this garden since planting cloves, I don't see any. So if you do decide to have a go at using garlic cloves for your roses, then do let me know and tell me if it works for you or not. I thought I'd share that bit with you, because I know sometimes you don't really want to be always using pesticides on things. And this is something that this client told me. Um, each year we keep planting the garlic cloves, we dig out the old and plant with new. And each year we never seem to have an issue with any aphids or green fly and things like that. This weed we call sticky bud. I don't know if that's a technical term, but <laughs> I know it's very sticky and it sticks to everything. It's a nightmare if you get it on your clothes or even on your skin, it's just it's just an absolute nightmare. And as you can see, it grows wild and yeah. I mean, the great thing about it is if you're trying to clear out an area, it comes out in one piece, which is great, but <laughs> it's annoying trying to keep it off your clothes. And <laughs> Here is a paracanthus and it has thorns, which is, such a nice thing when you're trying to clear it up and you get bitten <laughs> multiple times by the thorns, which is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Once I've finished going through all the borders, or as many as I can, as sometimes it gets quite late before I get a chance to finish, but I usually get through most of it. I then go around with the leaf blower, however I didn't film that, um, and then I go have a chat with the client. I do like doing this job because the client's lovely, she always comes out and gives me cups of tea and biscuits which is always a, a bonus. So uh, yeah, here's some before and after photos, thank you for watching and hope to see you for the next one, bye!